I sit here as one of the only renters in Parliament. And we heard today previously that, oh, there's a lot of politicians here who don't um, have come from um, these housing construction or developer experiences. Well, 30% of this country rents. And I'm one of the only ones in Parliament who rents. And every day I come into Parliament and I argue for things like stopping single mums from being evicted because they can't afford the rent by just putting a cap on rent increases, which has worked in Australia before and around the world. It works for renters. It doesn't work for property investors. I talk about building enough public housing so someone who has been waiting for 10 years, sometimes living out of their cars with a family, can move into a home. Talk about the fact that for my entire generation, we have been told that we are just going to get thrown to the walls, that neither government is going to tax tax handouts for property investors, that even though I know that the Prime Minister was able to buy a home in Marrickville for $146,000, about five times the average wage, now if I was to go and try and buy a house in Marrickville, it would be $2 million, 20 times the average wage. This is such a serious crisis, and all we're doing is tinkering around the edges. What? More power for property developers. Keep the tax handouts. Don't cap rents. Don't build any more public housing, or certainly not as much as the Greens are proposing. Well, I'll tell you where that leads. More of the same. And more of the same is me speaking to more single mums like I did over the weekend, who, with tears in her eyes, tears in her eyes, talked about the fact that she was having to skip meals so her baby didn't get nappy rash. I don't think that's sustainable. And let me tell you, there's a lot more people like me around this country who aren't in parliament. Young renters, angry, upset with a political class that has me sitting here as a renter debating the head of the property council about solving the housing crisis. How did we get here? And I think over the next few years, the entire political class is going to find out what happens when you ignore the one third of this country getting screwed over by a housing system that funnels billions of dollars into the people that don't need it right now, like the banks and property investors.